Now, for as long as the television program has existed, showrunners and producers have tried to use celebrity appearances to boost ratings and get people talking. You only have to look at a show like Friends to see how effective a cameo can be. I mean, famous folk from the likes of Isabella Rossellini to the former Duchess of York were all clamouring to get themselves into Central Perk, and their appearances are still talked about fondly to this day. But those cameos all kind of made sense within the confines of the episode. But not these ten. These ten were absolutely wild. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is what culture.com and these are the 10 weirdest cameos in TV shows that made no sense. Number 10. Snooky on Supernatural Remember Jersey Shore? It was a big-time reality TV show that ran from 2009 to 2012, detailing the lives of some New Jersey's dopiest residents, and one of the biggest stars was Snooki. Reportedly, on a whopping $150,000 an episode, Snooki was a huge deal at the time and made her presence felt on a number of other mediums as well. Wrestling fans know that she competed for WWE at WrestleMania 27, but did you know that she also rocked up in an episode of Supernatural? The Shore star appeared in Season 9's episode Blade Runners, in which Sam and Dean Winchester summon a crossroads demon in the hope of tracking down Crowley. To their surprise, the hell-dwelling creature is wearing the guise of Jersey's favourite daughter. It's a fun cameo and Snooki does nail her lines, but it was totally bizarre nonetheless. Who knew that Jersey Shore and Supernatural had anything in common, let alone the services of one of reality TV's biggest stars? The Winchesters should have kept Snooki around. We all know from her wrestling days she can actually be pretty useful in a fight. Number 9. The Porn Stars on iCarly now, one is a popular Nickelodeon show about a bunch of preteens making a web show in their attic, and the other is a reality TV show where people bring in their old junk to a pawn shop in the hope of getting some cash for it. So, um... Where is the crossover? In the iCarly episode, I Lost My Head in Vegas, the gang of annoying millennials travel to Nevada to get Sam's mum out of jail. Now, part of the plan to raise funds needed for the bail payment is to pawn off some items, so can you see where this is going? They turn up at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, aka the home of Rick, Corey, and Chumley. No old man in this episode, sadly. Rest in peace, brother. iCarly wasn't afraid of using guest stars, but they were usually musical acts aimed at a younger audience. I mean, what the hell do the plain white tees, One Direction, and the porn star guys have in common besides all appearing on this show, although technically that is one boy band we would be definitely interested in seeing. Number 8. Boy George on the A-Team now, the A-Team was a rough'em, tough'em action show about four Vietnam war vets on the run from the law. Hannibal, Face, B.A. and Murdoch used their skills to help out those in need, taking out bad guys across America each and every week. And on one episode, the team are investigating a stolen armored truck and a missing sheriff. For some reason, this involves the Face Man having to book a musical act for a local bar. And instead of getting famous country singer Cowboy George, he accidentally calls Culture Club's lead singer Boy George instead. You know, as you do. The British pop sensation cameos in this episode and eventually helps the gang get to the bottom of their case. He even manages to win over the local Hicks, closing out the show with a spirited rendition of Karma Chameleon. According to the singer himself, his experience on the show was actually quite surreal. He remarked about how the cast members didn't get along and how George Peppard apologised to him for their behaviour. Well, they were probably all just confused as to why Boy George of all people was on their show. Number 7. Penn and Teller on Babylon 5 in the world of stage magic, few duos have been quite as successful as Penn and Teller. Now, Penn and Teller combined classic sleight of hand magic with huge stunts and comedy as part of their very successful live show, which translated into several big TV appearances for the pair over the years. And one such appearance was on an episode of space opera Babylon 5 called Day of the Dead, which first aired in 1998. The eighth episode of the show's final season, Day of the Dead, sees the characters visit a festival that allows them to contact their deceased loved ones. Oh, and while all of this serious stuff is going, on, Penn and Teller turn up as two intergalactic entertainers. Playing Rebo and Zuti, who are basically fictionalized versions of themselves, they amuse the residents of the space station with their old-timey stage show. And this isn't just a one-off either, they're in this episode quite a lot. Hopefully Teller didn't get paid by the line though, otherwise he'd have been seriously screwed over. And to make things even weirder, this episode was written by Neil Gaiman. What a time to be alive. Number 6. Colonel Clink on Batman so, the original 60s Batman TV show was, um, weird, very weird. The acting was goofy, the special effects even more so, and honestly, if somebody said the whole thing was actually just a prolonged Monty Python sketch, we'd actually believe them. Amongst the many surreal moments of this show is this gem featuring another classic TV character from the time. You see, during the events of It's How You Play the Game, Batman and Robin are scaling the side of a building, as they do, and they're interrupted when a man sticks his head out of a nearby window, and that man is the character Colonel Clink from Hogan's Heroes. Now, 
Hogan's Heroes was a show about a group of American prisoners of war attempting to escape from a German camp. It was a sitcom, despite the serious premise, but that still doesn't explain why the colonel turned up in Gotham. The two banter back and forth, including Clink mentioning how his prisoners keep trying to escape, this despite the fact that his show was set in World War II and Batman was contemporary. Furthermore, the Cape Crusader seems to be chummy with Clink. I mean, does that mean that Batman is a Nazi? How deep does this go? Number 5. George Lucas on the OC now, the biggest problem with liking George Lucas's creations is that you have to, on some level, like George Lucas. He might be a decent enough bloke, but few people have done as much damage to Star Wars than the man who actually created it in the first place. The prequels, the Disney sale, all of those damned special editions, I mean, just give it a rest, will you? Thankfully, Lucas had a go at ruining somebody else's efforts when he turned up on teen drama The O.C. in 2005. Now, for those of you who don't know, The O.C. was one of those shows where annoyingly good-looking people have problems and somehow we have to care about them. Two of the annoyingly good-looking characters were Seth and Zack. The two buddies face a serious dilemma in this episode, because one of them has to take Summer to the prom whilst the other has to meet with Lucas to talk about their graphic novel, Oh the Humanity! Despite sounding like it was written by an AI, this is a real-life plot from an episode of the show. George turns up to dinner and even tells Seth to go back to the prom. So that means that George Lucas is pivotal to this story. What is happening here? Number 4. Top Gear on Phineas and Ferb so Phineas and Ferb is a great kids TV show about two stepbrothers who make the most of their summer vacation by building wonderful machines and going on excellent adventures. Although this episode is more about the subplot where their pet platypus is actually a spy. I tell you, kids TV is wild. Perry the platypus, aka Agent P, attempts to stop his nemesis Dr. Doofenshmirtz from winning a big car race to claim the prize money. And who is calling the action for this prestigious Grand Prix? Why, none other than Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May. The trio of English presenters made a name for themselves on the BBC motoring show Top Gear. Then Clarkson punched a man, so they had to go and make a similar show for Amazon Prime instead, and it wasn't anywhere near as good. The three Brits all do an excellent job with their lines, helping move the plot along through a series of comic asides. Still, how they managed to land a role on a Disney Channel show remains a mystery. Also, Patrick Dempsey plays a character in this episode, so this is basically a Phineas and Ferb slash Top Gear slash Grey's Anatomy crossover. Like I said, wild. Number 3. Larry David on Hannah Montana the middle section of the Hannah Montana Curb Your Enthusiasm Venn diagram has got to be pretty, pretty small. The show that launched Miley Cyrus and the show about Larry David running amok in LA surely attract very different audiences, and yet, this happened. In the episode My Best Friend's Boyfriend, Miley takes her friend Lily to a fancy restaurant to apologize for being a bad friend. In front of her, in the line for the establishment, is none other than the Seinfeld co-creator himself complaining about having to wait for a table. It's believed that David only took the role because his two daughters were such huge fans of the show. In fact, they're in the episode with him, playing versions of themselves. I mean, talk about a pro parent. In the end, the cameo is actually pretty funny. Miley skips the queue, leaving Larry annoyed. Then one of his kids remarks, I bet Uncle Jerry could have gotten us in. And that is good stuff right there. The kids got to see their favorite show, and the grown-ups watching along got to see somebody they liked do a bit part. So talk about the best of both worlds, right? Number 2. Prince on New Girl during his all-too-brief time on Earth, Prince mystified everyone he came into contact with. He was a strange man, and that is putting it lightly, but was also extremely secretive. He only made two appearances in scripted TV shows. One was for The Muppets in 1997, and the other one was on the sitcom New Girl. Revolving around kooky protagonist Jessica Day, New Girl was a big hit during its seven-season lifespan. But was it really big enough to draw Prince into its orbit? Well, apparently it was. As it turns out, he was the one to contact them, not the other way around. He was a fan of the show, one of the few television programs that he actually enjoyed, and was even scheduled to appear in a previous episode but had to pull out. In this one, which is just called Prince, he appears as a version of himself to give romantic advice to Jess. Now listen, we all know that he was a hit with the ladies, but we're not sure if Prince was the best position to be doling out relationship tips. I mean, the man was divorced twice after all. An oddity to end all oddities, Prince's appearance on New Girl was just as mad as the man himself. And number 1. Katy Perry on The Simpsons so, celebrities appearing on The Simpsons was nothing new when pop star Katy Perry turned up in the show's 22nd season. In an episode called The Fight Before Christmas, a series of unrelated sketches involving the family are presented. And yes, it is one of those Simpsons episodes. The final one sees the residents of Springfield rendered as felt puppets. The family are all there, as is Mr. Burns and so is Mo, who brings his new girlfriend Katy Perry along. Except, she's human. In her full fleshy glory, the California girl rocks up in Evergreen Terrace to the confusion of everything. 
everyone. Why is she not a puppet? Why isn't she yellow? Why is she dating Mo? The reason that she's there is to give Bernsey a hug so he will let the family go on vacation. But all of this is overshadowed by the fact that she is a person and everyone else is a puppet. This puts Perry in a very exclusive club of people who have appeared as live action versions of themselves on The Simpsons. A historical moment for sure, but one that still has got us scratching our heads many years later. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 of the weirdest cameos in TV shows that made no sense. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and I hope to see you over there. You can come check out all the Warhammer miniatures that I've been painting. Yes, I am a nerd. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we spoke today a lot about cameos that didn't make sense, there is one thing that definitely makes sense to do today, my friend, and that is just to be kind to yourself. You deserve the best things in life, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you Otherwise, you are a massive ledge, all right? Big love to you, and I hope you smash your life goals today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.